guys, here we are with another episode of the Fire Promoter series here on Fire Pro Wrestling World. This is the LDW show. I'm your host, George Harris King. Last time we had our second show, went very successful. We invited some people in, um, made a great profit. We stood at like 180,000 something dollars, like 180, uh, like 183 maybe. And we made such a good profit. We now today we stand at 164, which is serious progress. You know, we're building our popularity, we're building our stars and everything. But last time after the um I turned off the broadcast, I didn't show it. They sent they told me um as soon as this new month started that um I had to arrange a gym. But I already have a gym, so it was kinda strange to me. It seems like they want me to expand it, so that's already off the bat our big expense but I have a big plan not a big plan but okay plan for our show today I'm gonna have we're gonna have a number one contenders match for, between some wrestlers to see who will face Adam Page once again once he defends world title I'm gonna see if I can invite some people I'm about to overspend probably a little bit but it'll be worth it because we'll have a better profit in the future so there's that that's the guarantee you gotta spend money to make money. So that's that. Alright, t shirts. Let's see. I'm willing to spend the whole. Not the whole 64. I'm already. At, look, at, look at my thing. It's, it's already at 39,200. So. At this point, I'm willing to spend that 64, basically. I'm going to invite like one wrestler I'd say would be the best idea. Maybe one if I can get one. But if I try to invest in anything here, I'd invest in goods. Was wait, sorry to merch with stable logo. Mm, no one make it too high investment. So we can go with snacks, just something to make more money on the side cost 2000 sure let's go with it all right return now we're going to try to invite some people um this is, uh, not human resources let me see some records to help whether they say personal advice or general advice smash car will impact your ticket sale <laughs> Wrestler should be comparable popularity. Wrestling wrestler fight style should fit the match type. Place important matches late in the event. Yeah, give the audience what they want to see. But oh, that was my mess up. Okay, there you go. I was just trying to exit. Management, you really hit your stride, boss. Keep doing whatever you. Okay, cool. Uh, gym, the gym's in tip-top shape. Equipment can wear out over time, so keep an eye on it. Oh, those promotions were only worth <laughs> was only worth its weight in championship belts set up for costs cross promotion title matches and make their treasures ours. Okay, so they didn't tell me to do anything like that. I'm just trying to take any little bits of advice here. That's pro okay, so the reason why I have the comments section on the sides on the side over there, yeah, show my little PlayStation character logo or whatever. Um, if you guys want to send me suggestions as I'm doing this, uh, it's a live stream, so just offer anything. If you want me, if you think I should book something, I'm only going to listen for logical decision making. Um, I'm not just going to make a match and just make a match. You know, it's got to make sense. So that's why I have that thing on the sidelines in case anyone comments. Last time on here, we saw somebody commented, um, basically, just to watch the show, basically, <laughs> making themselves known. And that's pretty cool. But uh, moving on. Events. We're gonna book the event. Let me sure everything's up so I can hear. Um, it's usual that fans in the background. So if you can't really understand me, I apologize. It's hot in this room. Gotta keep that fan on. Let's see cross promotion. What does the cross promotion mean? That's WA. Their promotion is that type of style. And GPW is also that. So let me see if we can do cross promotion just to try it for once. We negotiate with SWA to hold a cross promotion event. The outcome can make our break our popular income. The outcome can make 
our break make our break our popularity well, why? I, I think they messed up their English they're making this game the outcome can make our break our popularity and income I don't know why I'm reading that that way I, I mean maybe I'm, my brain's a little slow out shot down they have no interest in working with you <laughs> looks like you need to work on popularity first okay that's fine I don't care let's try to invite at least one person from the indies not from another promotion It may cost. The reason why I say promotion is because it may cost more if I just try to get somebody from another promotion to come over. Somebody that fits our style here. Okay, so one thing I never analyze is not everybody's a showman on my show. Okay, everybody's a mixture of styles. Let's see, this is one thing I didn't pay attention to before. I don't think it really matters if they are a different style. I think it's, having a variety is just like, you know, a mixture. Some, some, sometimes people don't want to see the same stuff over and over again. See, he's showman. Oh, they're all showmen. Okay, so it automatically does that. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. That's whatever. I don't know. Event. Invite somebody. We're going to go to the free agents. Go to Lost Free. He's a showman. <laughs> Will Osprey's on the show now. Perfect. Will Osprey's an actual wrestler for those that don't know him. He just, I think he just won the Boss J tournament. The Boss J is the best of the Super Juniors tournament in New Japan Pro Wrestling. I think that was today or maybe it was the other day. I don't know. Uh, you know, there's a difference between American time and Japanese time, so it's whatever. Or I'm on the Eastern, so there's that. Um. So we have, we got one guy. There we go. And my headset always says something about some shutdown. Maybe I can figure that out later. Anyways, let's book the event. Let's see if this works out well. Mm. Showing how successful we were last show. I don't even want a special show like this. Like landmines and barbed wires. I mean, <laughs> barbed wire, we did, what did we do before? We did, we didn't do landmine, we did landmine. Yeah, we did landmine, we didn't do barbed wire death matches. I don't want that. My in, uh, That'll cause injuries if I do this. Cage match was not as bad. Makes sense. I mean, cage match might be fun. We can go with the cage. I'm just not doing this at all. I, I mean, this could cause injuries. So, there's that. Cage match is not as bad. The first show could cause serious injuries too. So there's that. Gymnasium, social media, Justin. I mean, I love how it just goes in there automatically. That's so cool. Um, so we have a visitor. If, if this doesn't work out, am I on the blue side? Okay, blue side, singles match. How popular is Ricochet? Not Ricochet, Will Osprey. He's C, C level. Who else is sea level? Oh, they're growing in popularity, aren't they? Why is she not growing? She's literally been winning. These two are have been winning the most matches lately. So, because Will Osprey is a great wrestler, he's gonna be in one match. Okay, so I don't think you can do triple threat matches on this game. Let me see. Um, yeah, that's not. What is mixed? Like mixed tag matches? Are they saying? Nah, they're doing something else here. What if I? Cause I, cause like we have top the top winners so far. Uh, who I want to put in this match would be Pentagon Junior, Tessa Blanchard. Um. And possibly Ricochet. He'd be a great comparator to put in this. Or maybe Michael Elgin to give him another chance. And Ricochet can start us off with Will Osprey, and then Nick Mondo could face off against some. Wait. Or, yeah, Nick Mondo could go against Adam Page to start us off just as like an exhibition match. Then Ricochet versus Will Osprey, and then if they can, we can do a triple third match, 
it would be Michael Elgin, Pentagon, and Tessa Blanchard. That'll be a number one contenders match. And then on our fourth show, we'll, we'll have a world title match, which would be simple. But let's see if we can even make that happen. Let me see something. Pentagon. Now Tessa. Oh, wait. I was like, Pentagon, he's got a whole bunch of outfits. You can give him signifying he's going for gold. Or not. No, no, no. Like I said, it show personality through Pentagon. Shows his mood. This says that he's, I guess, more positive walking into this. I don't know. It's so whatever. Tessa, she's worn the red before. She can wear the white this time. Oh, there has to be another person? But I don't want to. Oh, there's a team. Man. Okay. Delete the entry. So I got my hopes up. So Michael Elgin has been on a losing streak, and he also lost against the Visitor last time, so he doesn't get this match. Michael Elgin can face off against somebody. He can face Nick Mondo. Start us off to build up his credibility again because they're both on the worst losing streak. Ricochet at least has put on like a he put on a almost a 100% match with Tessa, so he gets a good match in there on our show. Adam Page is going to be inactive to on our show today, which is good, really. So here we go. We're gonna have three matches. Yeah, three. So let's just go start from the bottom, where I know where we start off. Signic Mondo, he's going to walk in. What did he wear last time? I think he wore yellow. Let me look, I'm going to look back at the video real quick. Let's see, we're only 12 minutes inside, into our show here. It's going to be literally, literally 60 seconds. I will be good. Uh, okay, never mind. Give me about, you know, extra. Uh, give me 80 seconds. Because I just accidentally stepped, <laughs> clicked on another video. Let me see something here. Uh, number two. I was already watching it, so. Let's go back in time. Come on. Alright, he was wearing yellow. I want to change his outfit this time. In our first episode. I still got 60 seconds, so. Let me look at the first episode. See what he's wearing on the first. Outfits won't matter after a time. I just want to do this for a special thing in the first four episodes, and I'll, I won't care after a while. He's wearing blue. Okay. So now he'll wear white. He will go off, go against Michael Elgin. And that's not the main event. Um, a classic match that we know. For those that have seen it before, Will Osprey against Ricochet. Possibly one of the best junior heavyweight matches in New Japan. Based on his, like all the acrobatics and just the, the confidence in the ring the both of them have is amazing. So let's see. I'm not going to keep working. I'm about to really not care about outfits now. <laughs> Anyways, I'd rather sign Will Osprey instead of just have him as a free agent visiting. Looking like looks like he has an injury. So it looks like Pentagon. Oh yeah, because yeah, last time he kept getting dropped on his head. That had, yeah, so it affected his neck. Look at that. Yeah, he's gonna have a neck issue walking into this match. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Actually, I can't give him a manager. Alright, fine. But, the champ gets a break. And that's that. That's our main event. Number one contenders match. Will Osprey is visiting. For a good price. Oh, I didn't even look at the budget. I'm, I'm not over budget. My budget was at 64000 so we're fine. We're still going to make a good amount of money. We'll be good to go by the end of this whole thing. So, there's that. Um, are we done here? 
Oh, let's configure the matches. What? Oh yeah, that's right. I'm still doing cage matches. Um, this this one is not going to be that. It's going to be a three count. Or yeah, three count. Time will be sixty minutes. I'll give him some weapons. Maybe five. How many can I give him? Four. Give him four. Um, we do spin Panther here. We don't want that typical Fire Pro Wrestling World music. I just realized I still haven't. Oh man, you probably can barely hear me because I didn't fix the volume on the game. Crap. You can probably barely hear me right now. That sucks. All right. It's whatever. If you can barely hear me, sorry. I'll fix the volume right after I'm done booking the show. You probably can still hear me. It's just hard. You gotta try a little bit. Probably turn up your volume a little more. Let's see. So, this will be a 45 minute match. This will be escapes. But at least, as long as you can see what I'm showing, it's whatever. Is whatever. Uh, great return. <sighs> Excuse me. Because Sicknick Mondo's in the match, we give him more weapons. Let's see. Spinning Panther. Time will be 45 minutes. That's done. This didn't have any weapons. These two are great wrestlers, so. They don't need weapons, and that's that. Alright. That's done. Alright, we're good here. Social media. Yeah, social media, that's gonna stand at that. Justin is our referee. I might hire a new referee. If it doesn't cost too much. Mmm. Who's Mike Armstrong? Is he yeah, he costs a lot. Earl Hebner? Earl doesn't cost that much. Earl Hebner would be fun to have on our show, so there's that. Um, I don't think there's anything else I have left here. I mean, rural, yeah. We're good to go. That's our typical budget, 13200 Until we hire more people. That's that. That's all we got to work with. So, confirm the match card. We're good to go. Champs not booked. We're good. Now, let me go work with, uh, save what I have. Save what I have. I gotta quit real quick so the volume, look at the budget, it was 59,000. Awesome. Literally, not even 60,000. That's awesome. Alright, let's fix the sound real quick. You can see what I do, typically. We haven't gotten to the match yet, so. I think the menu, you can probably still hear me though. Because the menu is still low. I don't know. I'm just still going to do this either way. Keep everything managed, because when we get to the match, I've been doing recordings lately, and I know like the sound is imbalanced everywhere. I just don't record my voice, which would probably mess, it would probably balance it out a little bit, but not really. It's whatever. So, we're all good now. All at 10. This is what I usually do. Now I go back to Fire Promoter. Load the data. 11.56, that's the time. Now it's 11.57, one minute later. Alright, our budget, 59,960. That's not too bad. We're good to go. Proceed. No, 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 no. We want to see the vent. Do we need a loan? No, we don't need no damn loan. Alright, here we go, guys. Alrighty then. Um, alright. What? What? I've already confirmed it. What are you talking about? Return, I guess. Is it confused or something? Oh, confirm. Maybe I should have said proceed. 
Unless I did I confuse the game or something? What happened? I already did all this. I shouldn't Oh Lord. Proceed, sure. Alright. March event, standard event, yep. Continuing on. I confused myself basically. Alright, here we go guys. We got standard match to start us off. Nick Mondo versus Excuse me. Nick Mondo versus Michael Elgin. Then we have a visitor, Will Osprey versus Ricochet in their classic match here on LDW instead. Then in our main event is a number one contenders match. Pentagon Jr. will face Tessa Blanchard. And the winner will face Adam Page on our next show. So there you go. Um, let's start us off. <laughs> oh, all right, guys. First matchup. Here we go. You know, if you have Sick Nick Mondo in the match, it's gonna have to have a lot of weapons. No DQ. The winner has to win by escaping the cage. This is Lions Den Wrestling, and they are fighting in the Extreme Lions Den match. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, nasty stomp to the back of his head. Throws him off. Oh, nice back and forth exchange between Nick Mondo and Michael Elgin. Both men are defeatable in LDW so far. Elgin had a world title match on the first show. He lost. And last week he lost against the visitor Stanley Adams in the main event. It was just a small exhibition match. Nick Mondo. He lost last week in a tag team match with Ricochet. Has not put on the greatest matches himself. So let's see which man can pick up some actual momentum here in LDW. Michael Elgin has been put, picking up momentum. Ricochet has actually been on a losing streak himself as well. But this week Ricochet gets to face the visitor, which is more of a balance of booking. Alright, so back and forth exchange between these two men is just a good fight so far. We gotta really worry about if Nick Mondo gets to hand some weapons. This man is ruthless. He comes from that ultra-violent style between IWA and CZW. He is a... He won the... Um, I've, my mind said a blank. I was like, Dojo Wars. It's not Dojo Wars. Well, he won that <laughs> tournament for CZW, the second one. Back in like 2003. He is part of what. He's like to CZW. He is the Sabu of CZW. And you know what Sabu did for ECW. He was so innovative with his way of ruthless aggression. And extreme hardcore wrestling. He's brutal. And now here we have Nick Mondo in LDW. To show off that style as well. And also show himself as a great professional wrestler. Now, Michael Elgin, known for his style in Japan, big man in the ring, highly athletic. You saw it last week here against Stanley Adams. He did a he did a tope over the top rope. Man of his size is not supposed to do something like that. Tope con hilo right over the top rope, land around type of stand top of Stanley Adams. So much great effort by Michael Elgin. Look at that! It's like he he ducked right there. Very serious technical wrestling shown between these two men. Calculating their each move they make here. Alright, now power slam there. Nick Mono takes him down. And once again, try, you know what you do to the big man? You gotta go for those legs, keep him down so you can keep him down for the pinfall. Or just keep him down so you can escape that cage. Oh my god, burning hammer! Oh my gosh. Throws him off. Nice hip toss there to the big man. Now a nice arm drag. Nick Mondo has a weapon. Swings and a miss. Swing and a miss again. Strike one and strike two. Has him up. And now a burning hammer of his own. 
Oh my god. Now scoop slam there. Nick Mondo going up. Nice double foot stop. Misses it. Sweeps underneath the legs. Elbows. Ooh. And a spinning elbow to follow up. Nick Mondo takes him down. Has a baseball bat now. Elgin off. Oof. That scared me. Alright. Double foot stop now. He lands it. Now what's Mono gonna do? Elgin's got him. Ooh. Throws him right into the cage. Power bombs him right into the corner. Ugh. Switching seats now. Elgin throws him off. <clears throat> nice power slam there. Spinning back it. Oh my goodness. Like a ninja. Kicks him off. Kicks. Spin kick again. How will Elgin come back from this? Uh, release burning hammer there. Going up. Waiting for him. Oh my goodness. Nice drop kick to the back of the head. Takes down the big man. The exchange. Kick. Elbow. Kick in an elbow. Nice side kick there. Takes down Elgin. Ooh. Throws him in. Watch out. Oh, headbutt there. Mono going up. Will he win? Elgin up. Looks like Mondo's going to win. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Your winner, Nick Mondo. Picks up his first win here in LDW. And Elgin continues his losing streak. Very devastating. Great match there, guys. We're going to move on. All right, up next, you're going to see some high-flying ability, technical wrestling. These men have faced off before. Now they continue their streak of matches here tonight. Will Ospreay, Ricochet up next. Two of the best of the Super Juniors in the world. Fight. All right. No weapons in the match. Sure, they're in a cage, but this is a wrestling match. All right. Scoop slam. Exchange of scoop slams. Nice stiff punch by Ricochet. Nice chop there. Osprey, a former junior heavyweight champion, ever openweight champion in Japan. Ricochet, former never openweight champ. back now guys sorry about that let's see I missed most of this I'm gonna watch it back later I'm assuming it's been a great match so far 
Let's see. Throws him off. Nice. Nice backflip from Ricochet. Come back. Alright, kick this one down. Let's see. Osprey. Elbow to the back of the neck. Nice hip toss by Ricochet. Ricochet bouncing off. Oh. Calculated it. These two men know each other so well. Now, within only 40 seconds of watching this, even though I walked away for a second, guys, I can see. You can, I can just see how they keep countering because they know each other so well. Two fantastic professional wrestlers. Kicks him in the back. Scoop slams him down. Osprey jumping off. Oh. Did he get the knee or did he miss it? Looks like he missed it. Barfly suplex. The point is to keep your opponent down so you can climb out the cage here. As opposed to our main event where it is a three count. Nice shooting star press to the back of Ricochet. This is a war. Oof. Nice elbow. Takes Ricochet down. Knocks him silly. How was he going to do? Another shooting star press. Now what? Kick to the back of the head. Shade. Ooh, nice snap suplex there. Takes down Will Osprey. Misses the drop kick. Nice Frankensteiner. The difference between a Frankensteiner and a Hurricane Rana. A Hurricane Rana, you just lock your legs around and just throws them across the ring. Frankensteiner, you hit your head on the mat. Physically, intentionally hit your head on the mat. Ooh. Nice falling clothesline there. And Ricochet. I love this move. Oh, gut check. I thought he was going for something else. I thought he was going to put him in a fireman's carry, throw him down, and then into the sidekick. Ricochet is fired up. Oof. Osprey. Wait a minute. What's this? Into the cage. Oh, 619. He's got him. Double underhook. Oh my goodness. He's got him. Step up kick to the side of the head. He is rocked ricochet. No, nope, never mind. He counters. A backflip kick. Pele kick, excuse me. Nice snap suplex. Kicks him. Oh my god, spinning back kick there. Ooh, elbow to the jaw there. Now here we go. Oh, nice. Fireman's carry side kick there. Ricochet going up. They say he was going to go for the 630 centon, but Will Osprey came back. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my god, Pele kick. Amazing. The exchange. Elbow, punch. Elbow, punch. Osprey, super kick. That takes down Ricochet. Now what? It's going back up. Shooting star press. Man, we definitely need to try to like sign this guy or something. Oh, Will Osprey. Ricochet's down. Can he catch him? Nope. Doesn't look like it. Congratulations to Will Osprey. Wow. Looks like. Ricochet and Michael Elgin are comparing losing against the visitors and on a losing streak. Fantastic match though from what I've seen so far. From what I saw during the match, even though I left. It's all good. Alright, great match. Thank you to the visitor Will Osprey to accept this offer. Moving on. Anyways, we're moving on here guys. And our main event is up next. Number one contenders match Pentagon Jr. and Tessa Blanchard. All their hard work has paid off to this moment here in our main event of the evening. Here we go, guys.
Referee rings the bell. Here we go. Pentagon Jr. Tesla Blanchard. Pentagon. First episode, he defeats Nick Mato in easy fashion. Tessa Blanchard in a classic bloody exchange between her and Ricochet. They had the match of the night last week here. Pentagon Jr. defeated the visiting, uh, I think his name was Michael, Michael Wilson or something like that. Defeated him in a fantastic match. One thing about Pentagon Jr. after that match, he walked out with a bad neck as there was a belly to back suplex that kept, he kept dropping him on the back of his head. So the back of Pentagon's neck is very damaged. You gotta worry about that when it comes to Tessa. Tessa may focus on the neck, keep him down, pin him down, choke him out. Anything can happen. Alright, Tessa takes him down. Oof. See, now she's going for the back of the neck now. Pentagon, that lit a fire in him. Pentagon with that bad neck. If she injures the neck, he's just going to go off of nothing but adrenaline from there. Because I know he's going to be in pain eventually. Ooh, a disrespectful slap to Tessa there. I've said this many... Oh my god. I've said this many times. Tessa has a lot to prove here in LDW. We respect women's wrestling, but we don't want to specifically say women versus women. We want the men versus the women. I want to see, personally, I want to see if she can defeat Adam Page one day, or maybe defeat anybody to become a world champion here in LDW. And not just keep it specifically women. Because you can see it with Tessa's ability in that ring. She's a fantastic wrestler and has fantastic ability to beat the men, so... That's that. Oh, a nasty slap again. Had to go off the ropes. Lariat. Pinfall. One. Two. Kick out. Takes her down. Backbreaker there. Pentagon is going in. One. Two. Kick out. Tessa. Double underhook. Pentagon throws her off. These two are on an undefeated streak here in LDW. Last week here, you saw at, you actually saw Tessa team with the world champion to face off against Nick Mondo and Ricochet to pick up the... And she's the one that made the pinfall. So she definitely deserves a number one contender spot here for the world title. Oh! Spinning elbow there. Yes, we see you have zero fear. Zero miedo. Going for the arms now. Will she tap? Nope. Now going for the power bomb. Boom. Just like that. Lariat takes her down. Kicks him off. All Tessa has to do focus on that neck or just show her ability in that ring as much as she can. And she can defeat Pentagon Jr. To face the world champion right here on our next episode. Or Pentagon can just overall show what he's got as usual, pick up the win over Tessa, and then of course go to be our second world champion possibility. As a possibility, I mean. Goes in for a suplex, boom. She's down, they're both back up. Back and forth. Exchange, pinfall here, one. Ooh, only gets a one count. Ooh, belly to belly suplex. Backbreaker there. Those are in. Here comes Pentagon. Oh! One thing with that chop, it's like he goes for the nose intentionally to make the eyes water up and and just take advantage of how they can't see now. Pentagon is exhausted going against Tessa now. Now one thing I just want to reference, like you know Tessa Blanchard, I just remember she's actually been, she competes all over the world, so she competes in Mexico very um, actively these days for AAA. 
and you know Pentagon, his work in AAA and Lucha Underground up to now. So this is, she has a sense of Lucha Libre. Hold on, hold on. Package pile driver. So this is not her first walk in a Lucha Libre style or facing a legend in Lucha Libre. And she's known for her intergender matches as well. This is a perfect match for Tessa Blanchard and for Pentagon as well. Oh, nice. Almost a blue thunder bomb there. Pinfall one, two. Oh, a kick out. Almost three. Tessa. Oh, double unhook throws him over. Oh, he shook. Neckbreaker takes him down. Will she capitalize? Oh, my God. Tessa answers. Okay. All right. The queen has spoken. Oh, falling clothesline. Now she just has to finish him off. Pentagon has her. Oh, a nasty power bomb there. That is the devastate Tesla there. Those are in. Oh, a sling blade. Beautiful. Punch. Overhead punch there. Knock down Tessa. Tessa just throws him down. Oh my goodness. As a the only female here in LDW, Tessa has a lot to prove to women's wrestling here. To show that she could fit in with the guys. Oh my god, double underhook DDT there. Pinfall. One, two, three. Oh! Beautiful. I thought that was it. Now what's she going to do? Oh, Superman punch into the corner. Following up. Oh my god. Oh! Such an amazing match so far. They're both exhausted. They're both amazing in that ring. These two definitely deserve a world championship one day. Blood, sweat, and tears are being shown here in this match. Oh my god, just brutal, just kicking at those ribs. Tessa's still hanging. They're both so tired that she can't even escape. Pentagon is exhausted. Tessa gets out of that. Now, oh, right to the back of the neck. Just a dirty move there with the injury, but she's taking advantage of everything. She's trying to win. She's got to do what she can. Oh, suplex takes him down. Pinfall. One, two, three. Oh, Pentagon. Tessa takes him down. Tessa demanding her respect. Here you go. Oh, spinning. Uh, spinning elbow, excuse me. There are I think Pentagon's more exhausted than Tessa right now. I think she's just hurt. Here we go. Powerbomb. Oh! One thing I like is how they have not grabbed any weapons to their advantage. One, two, three! Oh, wow. Congratulations to Pentagon Jr. Even with a neck injury, Tessa Blazer has lost. My goodness. Amazing match to finish our show here tonight. Wow. Just wow. Pentagon Jr. is the number one contender and he will face Hangman Adam Page for the world title on our next show. Fantastic show. Full house. Great ratings. Great show. Dave Meltzer will be proud of me. Moving on. End event. Go to our results. Full house audience love the show. This will boost our popularity for sure. Awesome. Selling out gymnasiums. Just amazing. I can mass uh CPW, Scott Williams, Bobby. Okay, good for them. All right, so we started out at 160 
164,000 and we're standing at 139,000 after that show. So we made a good I'm not doing all the math, but we did made a good amount of money. We only lost about 24,000 with some extra behind that, so it's not too bad. That's literally not that bad at all. Great budget. Great ending to this little episode. I'm going to see if they give me any messages so there's no confusion over the next episode. And we're kind of cutting it short here compared to our other shows, so it's whatever. Let's see, nothing noteworthy happened this month. From my perspective, we have a new number one contender, so no problem. So April management start. Star wrestler Albert joined BDG. Okay, good for him. He's not LDW, so I don't care. Our promotion will only grow as big as our roster. Wrestlers won't come knocking, so we need to go to them. From the human resources menu, you scout and offer contract to find new wrestlers. Don't expect to sign a new super sign a superstar at first. And for wrestlers that match the scale and popularity of our promotion. Okay, makes sense. Alright guys, that's our episode today. Catch you later for the next one. As the next time, we will have a world championship match. Bye.